If you try and think of Nintendo consoles that flopped, you might come up with the Virtual Boy, which was clunky and ugly and gave people headaches. Or the Wii U, which confused people so much that they thought it was just a new add-on for the Wii. Both of these consoles had low sales and were generally disliked by fans too. But if you ask Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Mario, which Nintendo console he regrets, you'll get a completely different answer. And it's a console that you probably would never suspect was a failure. Let me tell you about the console that Nintendo regrets. Okay, so it's not the Nintendo 64, but that's the era where things began going wrong. Because while Nintendo put out some acclaimed games, Mario 64 Who, Shigeru Miyamoto was still kinda unhappy. He felt like he wasn't spending anywhere near enough time making games. I was endlessly fascinated with 3D worlds, he says, but what with all the issues I had to tinker with in terms of rendering and processing speed, it got to the point where I didn't know who was making the games any longer. So in other words, he just wanted to focus on the design, on how high Mario should jump, how much damage Link's sword should inflict. But instead, he was distracted by the tech, by frame rate and draw distance. Zooming out a little, the rest of Nintendo as a company were hitting some rough waters. It was during the N64 era that Nintendo finally lost their dominant place as the kings of the game consoles. Check out this chart I made of console sales during the fifth generation. Now, the Sega Saturn sold about 9.5 million units, Nintendo 64 sold about 30 million units, but then there's the PlayStation. At over 100 million units sold, it beat Nintendo in a landslide. Especially embarrassing for Nintendo, considering the fact that Sony had never made a game console before. This was their first. And yet, they knocked Nintendo off their throne with over three times the sales of the N64. So the only thing Nintendo could do was compete. PlayStation had better graphics, well Nintendo's next console would have even better ones. N64 cartridges couldn't store as much data as their competitors, well their next console would use discs then, just like PlayStation. <laughs> This is how the GameCube was born. Essentially, they wanted to out Sony, Sony themselves. And in some ways, they succeeded. The GameCube was arguably the most powerful of its console generation compared to the PS2 and Xbox. But while this tug of war, this competition for power, was going on, Shigeru Miyamoto was worried. If Nintendo's games fail to stand out as games, he says, then it shows that the creation process is for nothing, which made me very sad. That was especially obvious during the GameCube era. The more we competed with new companies entering the market, the more we started acting similar to them. But is being number one in that competition the same as being number one with the general public? That's the question we had. And the answer to this question was a resounding no. Look, I made another graph, just call me the king of Excel, and it compares sales data for the sixth gen of consoles, of which the GameCube is a part. Now, the Sega Dreamcast is bringing up the rear at around 9 million units, which is not really a surprise. It single-handedly killed Sega's console line, after all. But then, next in line is the GameCube, which sold around 22 million units, compared to the PlayStation 2, which sold over 150 million units, that's pretty dreadful. And look at this, Nintendo were even beaten by the Xbox, by Microsoft who had never made a games console before. History had repeated itself, Nintendo were beaten by another newcomer. Their strategy had failed big time. As for the games, well, there are certainly some memorable classics, like Super Smash Bros. Melee and Luigi's Mansion, but I think it's telling that the system's big-budget Mario game, Super Mario Sunshine, shows clear signs of being rushed to market before it was ready. Entertainment is something that you have to look at the world with a very wide eye as you create it, says Shigeru Miyamoto. I always thought that, but there were a few years where I was unable to get off other people's trends. It was a dilemma in my mind. Those years, in case you couldn't tell, were the GameCube era. 
So that's what made the GameCube a failure in Shigeru Miyamoto's mind. It wasn't the poor sales or the fact that they were beaten by Microsoft. It was the fact that rather than setting the trends, Nintendo were trailing behind trying to copy them. That went for the system and for the games too. Nintendo titles were hardly even discussed by the general public back then, Miyamoto commented. That Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Mario, acknowledged that no one was talking about their games. Nintendo needed to go back to innovating, he felt, not creating games for an increasingly small group of hardcore fans. So, they decided to take a complete 180, look at everything they were doing, and do the opposite. We thought about starting over from scratch and aiming for games that can be played by people who don't play games, Miyamoto notes. We did some research, and the result was the classic NES series. Now, the classic NES series is essentially when, in the early 2000s, Nintendo ported a bunch of old NES games onto the Game Boy Advance. The games were cheaper than usual too, and this strategy paid off. For people who found modern games too complex, these simpler retro games cut away all of the distractions and extra complications, leaving just the fun at its simplest. But what about sales figures? Well, here's a list of the best-selling Game Boy Advance games. And in 13th place is NES Classic Series Super Mario Bros. It sold 2,270,000 copies. Keep in mind this is the original Super Mario Bros we're talking about. It was already available on tons of consoles, and yet it managed to rack up over 2 million sales. Plus, check out what happens if I highlight all the ports and remakes of old Mario games. That's like half the list. All of these were best-selling Game Boy Advance games. So when Nintendo stopped trying to compete for the newest, most powerful thing, they succeeded. And so Shigeru Miyamoto took this as a sign to go all out. No limits, no holding back. We didn't want a new game system, but a product that would make the entire world go crazy. And so Yamauchi said two screens. Now, for a number of reasons, designing a handheld console with two screens is madness. I mean, we're used to the idea now, but people in 2005 and 6 looking at this would be very confused. And Nintendo knew this was a bizarre move. Doing that would make the system larger and essentially double the price, Miyamoto says. And yet, we thought that it would be a new surprise for the general public, that it wouldn't be a bad way to attract the interest of a wide band of people. So, we went through some trial and error work, which ultimately connected to the touch pen, something I had wanted to have for a while. I didn't think two screens was enough to make the DS a success, but the touch pen is what puts it all together, both in terms of cost and design. That's what helps make it fascinating to people. And, well, 154 million units later, I think that Miyamoto and Yamauchi and the entire team at Nintendo were right. Giving up on competing with their competitors was the right strategy, at least in terms of sales, and I think in terms of fun as well. So I personally wouldn't say the GameCube was a failure. It didn't sell brilliantly, but we got some great games. However, Shigeru Miyamoto's dissatisfaction wasn't with the device itself. It did the things it was designed to do, he just didn't like those things. And this dislike, this sadness, helped push Nintendo into some of its best and most creative moments. The DS, the Wii, and the Switch all owe their success in some small way to the regret that was the GameCube. If you found this interesting, you can subscribe to this channel for more videos like this every week. Unless I get ill, then I will lie down and take some cowpole. But as long as that doesn't happen, then expect a new video. I'll see you next week. <laughs>